online services at Swords Baptist Church. We are thankful that you are tuned in and listening and watching today. We want to have our opening prayer together. Before we do that, I, I have some prayer requests I want to bring to you. Uh, our community here in Boaz and Sardis this week has had a terrible accident happen. Little John Luke Carver, a five-year-old, had an accident on four-wheeler this week. He's at Children's Hospital in Birmingham. We want to pray for him today. And I want to ask you to pray for his mom and dad and also for his little brother, big brother rather. And I want you to pray for them. Also, we have a friend in uh, Italy, a pastor, Pastor Dario, who has the virus, who is in a coma in the hospital, a dear friend of ours that we've done some mission work with, and our son and daughter-in-law have been working with in Italy. Pray that you would pray for them this week. Also, uh, the Allen family, who are music evangelists, who are friends of ours, this week are going to be doing an online revival up in North Carolina, and uh, each evening from Monday through Friday. If you can go to their website, the Allen Family website, you can get information on how to get tuned in for that. They're praying that revival would uh, sweep across America, and I'm praying the very same thing. So let's pray today, and I'd ask you to pray for our service also today. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for uh, the means of internet to be able to share today on the radio today, sharing the gospel and being able to worship together. Lord, I do pray especially for John Luke today. Lord, I know that you have been watching over him, and I pray, Lord, that you just lay your hand on him. And, uh, Lord, it be your will to bring him back to his health, be with uh, his mom and dad during this difficult time, all of the family, especially for his big brother, Braden. I pray you'd be there with him. And, Lord, I just pray you'd help that family. I also pray for Pastor Dario and the congregation out of Italy, Lord, I pray that you just this week bring him out of the coma and uh, touch him, help him to get better, be with his wife, and she's sick also. And uh, Lord, I do pray for people around the world who are experiencing some of the very same things through this virus. And Lord, I just pray that uh, we'd realize that you are still in control, and Lord, that you would just touch our nation and touch our world with a season of revival. I do pray for the Allen family as they are in revival this week. I pray you bless that. Be with us, Lord, in our service today. I pray you speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. We do welcome you today, and I want to make just a couple of announcements about some things that are going on. This week we'll be having some things online from the church here on Tuesday. I'll be doing a devotion, just a short devotion and prayer time for you. And on Wednesday evening at 6.30 we'll be having our Wednesday night prayer service and Bible study also online, just like you're watching this morning. So we would ask you to pray about that. Next Sunday, we do plan to do Sunday school at 9 o'clock. I appreciate Brother Dale Johnson teaching this morning. I hope you were able to tune that in. He did a wonderful job presenting God's Word. Also, uh, next Sunday, we'll be on the air at 10 o'clock. So you uh, stay tuned in and stay in touch with us, if you will. Also, uh, this week around our church, we've had our gymnasium open during the day for people to come and walk and work out. Because of the uh, thing that came out of Montgomery from our governor's office, we'll be closing our gymnasium until uh, all this virus stuff clears up. Just want to make that announcement for you. And also, uh, people have asked, and several even asked today, how to go about giving an offering, how to give your tithes and offerings. You can do that a couple of ways. One, you can... Mail that to the church at 1501 Church Street uh, for Sardis Baptist Church here in Boaz. And uh, you can also bring it by the church. Our office hours are from 8.30, 8, 8 to 4.30 each day. So let me encourage you to do that. And also in a couple of weeks on Easter Sunday, we're going to be doing the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, which goes to uh, the North American Mission Board to help start new churches across America. Our church goal is $5,000. I hope you will pray about what God will have you to give for that. Now, please uh, let this be more than just a time of viewing. I encourage you to worship right along with us today. I encourage you to take your Bible in a little while as I preach and follow along in the Bible. I encourage you to sing along with our group as they sing today. Even though uh, we're not here on one campus today, we're on hundreds of different campuses and different places Let's just lift up our voices in praise to him as we worship together today. Amen. See if you remember this great old song.
Jones is going to bring his special music. Or Chase, hand Excuse me, Chase.
I got up thinking about God's grace. And even though we may not be in the same building, we can still lift up the name of Jesus. We have breath in our lungs this morning, and that's something to be so thankful for. So if you would sing with us this morning, He Thought of Me.
kept practicing the song, and again, it just didn't feel right. I felt like God was trying to tell me to sing something else. And um, I had Amazing Grace in the back of my mind. And so Friday night, I just felt a really strong urge. And I text Shauna, which is John Luke's mother, and I said, does John Luke have a song that he likes to sing at church? And I didn't know what she was going to respond. I didn't know if it would even be a song I could learn by Sunday. She responded back very quickly, and she said, yes, 1,000 Reasons and Amazing Grace. And I had chills over my whole body because I knew at that moment God was laying that on my heart for a reason. So I called John up. And I immediately told her, I said, Jonna, God wanted me to sing this. And I said, you tell that sweet boy that I'm going to sing this for him today. And when he gets better and he comes home, I'm going to come and we're going to sing it together. So this morning as I'm singing this, I want you to think about that sweet boy that God will just lay his hands on him. Thank you. 
Bible verses 1 through 11, and that's where the Sunday school lesson will be this morning. And uh, I knew that I was preaching this morning from Romans chapter 5, verse 1. I believe God wanted us to hear from Romans chapter 5 today. Someone said the five greatest words in all the Bible are, and it came to pass. What we're going through right now seems like an eternity. It seems like very difficult days. But I want to say to you today, this too shall pass. I appreciate you very much listening today, and I appreciate our folks coming to sing and share. And I appreciate you watching today, and I encourage you this morning to take your Bibles and look with me to God's Word today. We're going to be looking at two or three different passages in the message today. And I want to talk about God's wonderful peace, the peace that He's given us, a sure word from heaven. I believe that it's needed today, maybe more than ever before, and it's a needed reminder from God's Word. I'm, as well as you are, aware of what's going on in our land today and even around the world today. And I have a little thought I want to bring to you from God's Word this morning. The airports are empty. The hotels are empty. The restaurants are closed down. The large cities in America and around the world have shut down. Many people are living in fear today. Many are living in doubt today. And it seems like we don't have a sure word today. It seems like there's no hope and no peace today. And we just don't know what we don't know. We don't know what this is. We don't know how long it's going to last. And as of now, we don't know a cure for it. We don't even have a vaccine to keep from getting it. So in the midst of what we don't know, it's very easy to get our minds off what we do know. And it's easy to get our minds off of who we know. Today, as God's people, we do know that we have the Word of God, and the Word of God has a sure word for us today. And we know that not just the Word of God, but we know that God Himself has a word for us today. One of the things that God has spoken into my heart and into my spirit today, that God has for us wonderful peace as His children. Even in the midst of turmoil, there is peace available. The Bible speaks about peace, and it talks about peace on many different levels. So today I want to talk about three different types of peace that we find in God's Word. If you look with me today in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, you'll find these words. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The first kind of peace I want to talk about today is unsurpassable peace. I call this peace unsurpassable peace because look at verse 1. It has the word therefore in it. I've always been told growing up in the scripture when you find the word therefore in the scripture, you need to stop and look and ask what is it therefore? It is a word that connects us with what has already been said in God's Word. Those of us who know our Bibles and who know much of what Paul said in the book of Romans, we've just studied it together on Wednesday nights and on Sunday nights. If you've been studying it in Sunday school, if you've been attending our Sunday school classes, we know that the first three chapters of Romans remind us that we are all sinners, that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says there's none that doeth good, no, not one. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're reminded, and it's painted for us in the scripture, a very ugly picture of what the human race really is without God. We are all sinners, and we are sinners without a Savior. And because we are sinners and because the Lord Jesus is the Savior, we cannot save ourselves. And verse 1 says we are justified by God, by 
by faith, and that peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That word justified is one of the greatest words in all the Bible. It means just as if I had never seen it. There was a day, if you're a child of God, there was a day when you got saved. This verse reminds me of the day that I got saved. Maybe you can think back today when you came to the Lord and you said, Lord, I am sorry. I know, Lord, that I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that you died for my sin. Oh, Lord, I know that you were buried and I know that you rose again the third day. And Jesus, I don't want to go to hell. But Lord, I want to go to heaven. And in order to do that, Lord, I know that I have to put my faith and trust in you as my Savior. And when that happened, that moment in your life when you realized that you were a sinner, you invited the Lord to forgive you and to come into your life, and you realized that His blood paid your sin debt in full. And when God looks at us today, He no longer sees the sin in our, in our life, but He sees us just like we had never sinned. We've been preaching and thinking about hallelujah for the cross, and there's a message of victory in the cross today. There's a message of victory in the Lord Jesus, how his blood still covers sin today and still brings victory today and still brings assurance today. And we no longer have to have guilt, and we no longer have to have shame. But all he sees when he looks at our life is the blood of his dear son, because we have been justified. And in the sight of God today, it's just as if you had never sinned. He doesn't see my sin. He does not see my past. He doesn't see anything that I've done. But he sees the blood that's been applied to my account. And I've been justified by his blood today. And because of that, I now have peace with God. In the Old Testament, we have learned that under the law, we were enemies of God because of our sin. We could never get to God on our own. That's why the Lord Jesus had to come. And as an enemy of God, because we did not know him, Jesus brought us back to God and he bridged the gap between us and God, between a holy God and sinful men. And that bridge was called the cross of Calvary that Jesus died upon. And now we have peace today. I don't know about you, but I, I'm so glad that I'm no longer an enemy with God. But I'm a friend of God. Now I don't hear any amens here because there's nobody here today, but I hope you said amen out there in your living room today. We're no longer enemies, but we're friends of God. No longer are we outcasts, but we're called the children of the King. And it's all because of that unsurpassable peace, the peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you today, do you have that peace? Do you have that unsurpassable peace in your heart and in your life, the peace with God? You can't buy it in the store. There's nothing out of the world that can provide that kind of peace. There's nothing you can do on your own to get right with God. Only through the blood of Jesus applied to your soul and applied to your sin debt can that peace come in your life, that unsurpassable peace. Does anyone need peace today? I believe we need peace more than ever before. You know, we've been kind of quarantined for about two weeks, and to me it seemed like an eternity. And I've looked and there's not much peace and not much hope in people's lives today. But I'm so glad to have a sure word from the Lord today. You can have peace with the Lord Jesus Christ today. An unsurpassable peace. Now take your Bibles and turn to the book of Isaiah. I want to show you another verse in Isaiah chapter 26. If you'll turn there, I want to read verses 3 and 4 for you. Here's what it says. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yahweh, the Lord is everlasting strength. Not only can we have unsurpassable peace, but the 
Second kind of peace I want to talk about is unmistakable peace. The Bible is talking about in verse 3, perfect peace. It is hard to rival perfect peace. There's nothing that can be added to it. And regardless of how dark the day, and regardless of your circumstances or what happens in your life, if you're a child of the king, you can have an unmistakable peace. Nothing can take that peace away from you. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken away from it. Isaiah said, that's the kind of peace that God offers today. It's not only unsurpassable, but it is unmistakable peace. You'll never know this kind of peace until you have that unsurpassable peace. And you'll never know perfect peace until you have a vibrant, living relationship with the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. People in this world are praying for peace. I just returned from the land of Israel, and they're always praying for peace. But the truth of the matter is, there won't be peace in the Middle East or anywhere else until the Prince of Peace returns. And I'm so glad to tell you we can have His peace today. When you come to know Him, He gives us perfect peace. Now we know in our day there are not very many things that we can say are perfect. There are no perfect governments today. Amen? There are no perfect leaders today. There are no perfect policies or no perfect parties or no perfect ideas. There are no perfect pastors. There aren't even any perfect churches today. I heard someone say, if you ever find a perfect church, don't join it because you'll mess it up. You know, there's no perfect churches. Why? Because there are no perfect people and there are no perfect preachers and there are no perfect relationships. There are no perfect homes. There are no perfect jobs. There's nothing perfect in this world. But Isaiah said, God's peace is perfect peace. Unblemished peace. It is unmistakable peace. Well, Pastor, how do I get that peace? Look at what the verse says in Isaiah. Whose mind is stayed on thee. If you want perfect peace, you won't have that peace until your mind is stayed on God. You see, in our day, it's so easy to allow the news waves of our world to flood our hearts and minds. And it's so easy to be consumed with the news today. And I will tell you, you'll never have peace if you're consumed with the newscast today. If all you do is sit all day long and watch the news and listen to the dark days in our world, you won't have peace. You'll just have panic today. A lot of people are consumed with what the news media tells us. A lot of people are consumed with what our culture tells us and what our society tells us. So in order to have unmistakable peace, our minds have to stay on the Lord and to think about Him. And when our mind stays on Him and we trust in Him because we know His Word is true. You see, there's not very much sure in our world, but His Word is sure. And His Word is steadfast. And we can look at His Word and trust in Him. When you see God's Word and you read His Word, it's like watching His Word come to pass in our day. All these things that are happening today are simply the Word of God coming alive. That tells us that we can have a God that we can trust. So our minds need to stay on Him in these dark, dark days. And when it does, God imparts to us, within us, His perfect peace. His unmistakable peace that the world cannot give you and the world cannot take it away. Over the Gospel of John, chapter 14, Jesus said, My peace I give to you, not as the world giveth unto you, but my peace. Neither let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My friend, that is unmistakable peace. 
It is perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Now I know today, because I'm in this right along beside you, days of somewhat being quarantined in our homes and not able to do the things we normally do, those distractions, not able to travel those extra miles. I want to encourage you with a sure word today. Instead of getting caught up in what's happening in the world, to spend more time in the Word of God than ever before. And I want to challenge you this week to spend more time in the Word than you do listening to the news. I mean, it really doesn't matter what's on the news because it's discouraging today. It's depressing today. And it will consume you. And you'll be down and discouraged. But dear friend, this wonderful book today, which I'm speaking from, the Word of God, encourages our soul and it lifts us up and reminds us of our God. And it tells us He is still in control. It is unsurpassable peace with God. It is unmistakable, perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Then one other passage I want you to notice just one verse from it. Philippians chapter 7. We read not only about unsurpassable peace with God, we read about unmistakable peace, perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. But we also see unexplainable peace. Look at verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Unsurpassable peace is peace with God. Jesus paid my sin debt. And when I come to Him and I confess my sin to Him and trust Him as my Savior and Lord, He takes my sin away and takes me from being an enemy of God and makes me a friend of God. And that is peace with God. That is unsurpassable. Nothing else can take its place. That is leading to unmistakable peace. The peace that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. Perfect peace because my mind is stayed on the Lord. But in Philippians 4, 7, look at it. Paul explained it. Unexplainable peace. He says, the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Look back at verse 6. There's a good word in verse 6 for our day. He says, be careful or anxious for nothing. That means don't worry and don't be troubled. So he says, don't worry about anything, but by everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. In other words, in these days, here's a sure word from God. Don't worry. Don't panic. Don't fear. Don't go into overload. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, thank God for what He's doing today. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't know what God is about in our day. But I've just had a couple of thoughts this week. Could it be that God is sending one final warning to the world? I am coming soon. Be ready. Could it be that he's giving one final wake-up call to his church today? Could it be that church, when we gather together again, He'll give us a whole new appreciation for the body of Christ. So that when we come back together, we'll not take the church for granted. We'll not take the freedom to worship together and fellowship together and be together for granted. I don't know what God's doing, and you don't know what God is doing. But we all praise Him today for whatever He's doing. Because whatever it is, it is going to be right. And it's going to be for our good and for His glory. Paul is saying that when we do that, when we worry about nothing, when we thank God in prayer and supplication, Paul said, the peace of God, which is unexplainable, that means you can't describe it. 
Sometimes as a pastor, I have to make decisions. And I make decisions and people ask me the question, Pastor, how can you know that's the right decision? Well, sometimes I just know. I can't explain it to you. I can't describe to you what God's put on my heart, but I just know. How can you know? Because it's the peace of God. It is unexplainable. And it passes all understanding. And listen to what it says. And it keeps your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Now that word keep in that verse of scripture is a very interesting word. It is a military word. It talks about how an army, a band of soldiers would keep a city safe. They would protect that city. It's a word that God would keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He would garrison around us and keep us safe. So even in these dark days, he will make his peace flood our hearts and he'll keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It'll guard our heart. It'll keep our heart. It'll protect our heart. And it is beyond anything that I can explain. The peace of God. You see the connection today? I can't have the peace of God till I have peace with God. How can I have peace with God? Only when I know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Dear friend, if you don't know Jesus today, you'll never understand peace. And you'll go through these days in panic and turmoil and wondering whatever's going to happen next. But if Jesus is your Savior and your Lord, along with Him, you can have that unsurpassable peace, that unmistakable peace, that perfect peace that He gives. And then I can have unexplainable peace, the peace He gives and passes all understanding. Several years ago, our family had a tragedy and we lost a son-in-law in a terrible accident. And during those days, I want to tell you, God spoke peace to my soul. The darkest days we'd ever been through, the darkest thing we'd ever seen, even until now. But I can't explain it to you how in those dark days, God will flood your soul with peace. I've had people ask me, but Mike, how can you go on? How can you face the difficulties that have happened? And all I say is, it is unexplained. It's just the peace of God. Do you have that peace today? God's wonderful peace. Do you know that peace today? Do you know Jesus in the free pardon of sin? Is Jesus your Savior and Lord? If not, whether you even realize it or not, the scripture says you are the enemy of God. And you can't have peace without the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you have that peace, you begin to trust God. And you begin to look to Him. And you begin to lean on Him. You know this unexplainable peace that passes all understanding. And that peace will protect us. Pastor, how are we going to make it? All that's going on, how are we going to make it? Folks, I will tell you, God is still on his throne. He is still in charge. He's not surprised by anything that's going on. May God flood our hearts with unmistakable, unsurpassable, unexplainable grace that passes all understanding. Do you have that peace? There's an old hymn that says, Peace. Peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. That unmistakable, mistakable peace, unexplainable peace. Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote that little book that most of us read back in high school or maybe elementary school, you may not even remember it, but there's a little book he wrote called Treasure Island. And it told about a lighthouse inspector on the coast of Scotland many years ago. As a young boy, Robert Stevenson would go with his father on trips. They would get on a boat and they would travel 
on the coast of Scotland. And they saw the lighthouses along the coast. One night he tells a story about being on board a boat and a terrible storm broke out in the night and it shot fear through the heart of that young teenage boy and he started panicking because of the storm that was around him and he asked his dad, Daddy, are we going to make it? Daddy, are we going to be okay? And the father tried to reassure his son. We're going to be okay. And his son said, well, Daddy, how do you know? How do you know we're going to be okay? The dad looked at him and he said, son, you stay in this cabin. I'll be back. I'm going to speak a word with the captain. And he left his little boy in the cabin. And he walked up the deck and he walked up to the captain's quarters and he knocked on the door. And without even getting to ask him a question, the captain looked at him, and he had a peaceful look in his face, and he knew he didn't even have to ask the question. He went back to his son, and he said, son, I looked at the face of the captain, and that look told me, everything's going to be okay, son. The captain is in charge, and he's at peace. So we can be at peace. Friend, today, I want to tell you, the captain is in charge. If you look into his face today, the captain of our salvation, you look into his wonderful face and you come away, and you have to know everything's going to be all right. May God grant to you, may God grant to fill your heart and your home with the assurance, the unexplainable peace will flood your soul. But if today you are not a child of the King, and you don't know the Lord Jesus, and you don't know if you die today, you can't say that heaven is my home, I would encourage you today, right where you are, admit that you're a sinner. Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. Admit that you are lost and believe that Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. And right now, right where you are, you don't have to be in a church building, right where you are, you can bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, save me today. Come into my life. Lord, I confess my sins. Forgive me of all my sin. Lord, come in, be my Savior, be my Lord. And if you do that, I've got good news, a sure word from the Word today. You can have that unsurpassable, unmistakable, unexplainable peace. Well, Brother Mike, I, I appreciate that message, but I'm already a Christian. Well, child of God, I know these days are uncertain days. And many are looking for divine intervention. This week, wondering how long is this dilemma going to last? Maybe we won't know any more next Sunday than we know now. Many are looking for answers today when it seems like there is no answer. But can I just remind you today, here's a book that has all the answers you need. And the answer you need is God is on his throne. And he's in charge. And listen to me. He is going to take care of you. Be careful. Don't worry. Don't be troubled. Thank God not only for what he's doing now, but for what is going to come out of this that you and I cannot see. One day, we don't realize it, but one day we're going to come through this storm and we're going to look back at it and we're going to see the unseen hand of God was at work in the midst of our storm and we're going to thank God for how he took care of us during these days. Let him guard your heart and mind in these days. And the peace of God will pass all understanding. It will flood your soul. I'm thankful for that today. Today, if you're listening and you don't
don't know the Lord and you'd like to talk about that, if you'd like to talk with me or talk with someone about that, I'd be glad to come to where you are. I'd be glad to get on Facebook or get on live streaming with you or even just to talk to you on the phone and share with you how you can come to know Jesus, just like I've talked about today. I want to ask you to bow your heads and let's have a prayer and close this service today. Lord, I thank you today for this last time we've had together. I thank you, Lord, for the wonderful music we've heard that lifted our souls. Lord, I thank you for a sure word from you today. Thank you for a peace that passes all understanding. Help us to look to you for our strength. And Lord, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.